welcome everybody welcome to the uh, third convocation of the global policy diplomacy and sustainability fellowship it is an absolute pleasure to uh, have all of our fellows in this room uh, and we've been on a great journey since the past 3 months uh, at gpods uh, we bring in fellows who are at the watershed threshold in their education and careers and that's what we uh, you know uh, that's how we select our fellows and we keep talking about this that you know uh, the fellows who are coming in at gpods they should be at the watershed threshold in their education and careers what do we mean by that phrase watershed threshold so let me break that down for you pretty quickly so a watershed moment it's a turning point the exact moment that changes the direction of an activity or a situation a watershed moment is a dividing point from which things will never be the same it is considered momentous though a watershed moment is often recognized in hindsight that's the definition of a watershed moment so what's a watershed threshold a watershed threshold then is a stage in a person's life where they are just a step further from the tipping point from hitting their watershed moment so they are just a step away from growing 10x or even 100x from where they were all they need is one last push the networks the advocates for their careers the mentors the promoters and the knowledge and the skills all of these things come together as that one last push for you to grow from your watershed threshold to your watershed moment at gpods that's our aim our fellows over the past 3 months uh, as fellows you were invited to speak at various events you spoke at the london climate action week you spoke at the world economic forum global shapers hubs uh, you spoke at the gpods international ideation summit uh, you judged competition at the asean youth summit you learned cutting edge analysis techniques with peers from all over the world you deliberated with uh, you know on the future of climate change uh, with your peers at the king's college london with futurists such as dr wendy shields uh, you were part of diplomacy negotiation simulations organized by the state department usa uh, you worked on real life projects you made uh, you know impact in the real world uh, you worked on uh, projects from the un conference on trade and development unctad from the space foundation from envipol and from the quad diplomacy forum you are now leaving with a network of 46 fellows and 95 alumni from 12 different countries 122 mentors two of them are ishan and myself so 122 mentors from 37 different countries and sometimes that one connect makes all the difference in any country that you visit or you work in you will find a gpods mentor or a gpods fellow who can be associated with you when you look back at this time you will realize that gpods was your watershed moment and i hope you do and we thank you so much uh, for being here with us today and for making this whole journey special for us because for us ourselves gpods is the watershed moment in our life in our careers so thank you so much for that now without further ado let me invite our chief guest our convocation speaker who encompasses all the values of concern for the world around us uh, things that gpods stands for he encompasses all the skills of diplomacy all the knowledge of public policy and the impact through sustainability to make a better world around us and our future generations I welcome Mr. Bisho Parajuli, who is the United Nations World Food Program representative and country director for India. The World Food Program, as you know, was the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize for 2020. Mr. Parajuli brings 35 years of distinguished experiences in development, humanitarian affairs, diplomacy, fundraising, and management in over 10 countries in Asia, Middle East, and Africa, including the World Food Program headquarters in Rome. prior to his current engagement mr parajuli served for the past 5 years in zimbabwe as the un resident coordination and designated official of the un secretary general and also as the resident representative of the un development program prior to joining the un in zimbabwe mr parajuli served as the un world food program representative and country director in yemen 
from 2013 to 2014 and in the World Food Program headquarter in Rome as the Chief of Staff Director of Executive Director's Office, as well as the Director of Government Donor Relations. Earlier, he also worked as the UN Resident and Humanitarian Coordination and UNDP Resident Representative in Myanmar. And prior to Myanmar, he was the WFP Representative and Country Director in Egypt. He has also served in various positions in World Food Program offices in Indonesia, Bangladesh, Mozambique, Botswana, and uh, the headquarters in Italy. Uh, Bisho holds two master's degrees in agricultural development and business administration, and an honors degree in agricultural science. That's one more degree than what I have. So, uh, and he has probably been uh, the country director, as you've heard, uh, of a dozen countries across the world. So uh, with that, without further ado, uh, let me welcome Bisho to deliver the convocation address. That's very generous. Thank you very much, uh, Arpit. And uh, good evening, uh, all fellows, uh, uh, distinguished mentors, uh, uh, whoever participating in uh, today's uh, convocation. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity to join you and uh, to say a few words and to share my journey over many years and uh, and also exchange that uh, with you. Um, I, uh, whatever I would be saying or talking, uh, probably, I mean, nothing would be new as such, uh, but I just want to bring that uh, uh, together as you graduate uh, as the fellows from the uh, uh, GPODS. Uh, so thank you, Arpit, uh, for this uh, opportunity to talk and share. Um, I, I have two parts in my conversation. The first part, uh, I will talk about uh, values uh, and, and, and uh, projecting behaviors. Uh, and on the second part, I will talk about uh, what are the global challenges we are facing and where uh, uh, the knowledge, the diplomacy, the policy, and whatever you have gained so far uh, could, be, uh, could be practical and, and useful and where um, one could uh, focus on. The first part of the conversation about values. Uh, uh, values uh, connects and inspires people. Uh, it will support each one of you for your long-term success. Uh, and it will also inspire you in a journey going forward. Uh, I'm just, I've selected here, there are many values, but I've selected here for our uh, conversation about five uh, key values uh, I, I, I put forward as, uh, uh, as critical as one moves into these, you know, different level uh, going forward. As a good reminder, as a good uh, uh, thoughts, ideas, the first part is integrity. Uh, integrity is uh, living up to the highest standard. Uh, this is very critical. And, and it is reflected through communication, uh, consistency in behavior, and doing the right thing. Uh, then only one could demonstrate the highest level of integrity. Uh, the second point is collaboration, uh, working together towards a shared vision uh, and, and, and goals. Uh, here, the critical elements of the behaviors are uh, ability and working closely, uh, focused on solution and adapting to changes. Um, you will realize that there are uh, simple things, but also very critical. Third part, third values, uh, I want to uh, bring it here is commitment. Uh, commitment is delivering on the promises, promises uh, to your organization you work or to your friend, to your fellow colleague uh, or partner. Um, and there the behaviors are uh, following through on what we say it's not enough that we, you know, bring lots of uh, messages as many politicians do, uh, but but delivering on the promise. 
and taking responsibilities for one's own words uh, and actions, uh, as well as operate to the highest standard. Uh, that's uh, in terms of commitment. And then uh, taking actions to get things done. It's not enough saying, but getting things done. Uh, fourth point I want to stress on working for the World Food Program uh, as a humanitarian, the humanity. Uh, for me, humanity is very critical. At the end of the day, uh, that's what uh, stays behind. Um, uh, uh, you will recollect this long longitudinal survey done by Harvard over several generations where uh, where, where at the end, what people said is, you know, good friendship. Uh, it's not the houses or the limousine or, or all the luxury everybody had, but humanity. Here, uh, the stress on improving the people's life. How are we contributing to improve people's life? Uh, not just being self-centered and there, um, thinking through putting oneself in someone else's suit, bringing an element of empathy, uh, enabling everyone to be their best if you are a team leader, uh, and, and also taking into account uh, the need of others uh, and act to improve the level of others, supporting, joining hand. Uh, and the fifth is uh, inclusion. Uh, respecting each other's unique contributions, their differences, their values, and et cetera. Here, the behaviors are um, respect individual differences, appreciate the contribution of each member of the team. Uh, um, there is always a rat race to win uh, and, and, and forgetting uh, everybody else. Uh, but, but that is, uh, you know, can be problematic going forward. And also ensuring that people are given equal chances to contribute and listen to and understand. Uh, of course, there are many elements, uh, you know, one could bring very, very many parts of the values, uh, but I just chose these five being uh, an important thing. Uh, and then the second part of my conversation, I want to focus on uh, five areas where we have a, a challenge in this world, where diplomacy, policy, uh, and broad sustainable thinking plays a very important role. Sadly, many countries are engulfed in conflict. Uh, Middle East, we look at Iraq, Syria, Libya, Yemen, uh, still the trouble in Palestine since 50 years, several countries in Africa, DRC, Mali, Cameroon, Burkina Faso, Central African Republic, Nigeria, South Sudan, Sudan, now Ethiopia, in Tigray region, et cetera. Asia, we are witnessing Afghanistan right now. Also Myanmar into problem, a million, Rohingyas cross the border to uh, uh, Bangladesh. Uh, these are challenges and, and that doesn't really uh, help uh, uh, people, millions get affected uh, and millions gets displaced uh, and, and, and people suffer, uh, lots of people die uh, very sadly. Uh, the United Nations system uh, has several peacekeeping missions uh, uh, in the world uh, around these countries. Uh, and then there are some also from uh, uh, beyond these countries. Uh, nearly $6.5 billion is spent yearly in that. There are hundreds of thousands of peacekeepers uh, helping to maintain peace uh, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, prosperity and progress in those countries. Um, so this is a threat for us, the conflicts. Uh, there are many factors which results in conflict. 
but some of these points which I mentioned uh, have an interlink. Uh, the next is, is human rights. Uh, you know, the universal declaration of human rights. I don't know if uh, uh, any of your cohorts have seen this book. Uh, it's, uh, it's dignity and justice for all of us. Uh, this thing has not changed since December 10, 1948. And if you go and look at it, uh, this document uh, is really amazing how our, uh, you know, uh, elders thought so wisely and, and brought this very simple 32 articles, but it's still so powerful uh, to, to, to stress on right to life, liberty, and security of every person and, and, and dignity. Uh, this is really fundamental. Uh, and this is universal. This is not, this is not Eastern, Western, uh, or anything. It is humanity. It's every human being. Uh, uh, <clears throat> third point I want to mention here is the climate change. Uh, sadly, um, we have been witnessing last two years uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, it has affected the whole world. Uh, millions of lives have been lost. Uh, 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 economy has been destroyed. Uh, 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 the, the people have suffered. The trade business has suffered. suffered. Um, and, 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 uh, and the countries are bearing the consequences of this. Uh, lots of people have lost their jobs. Uh, you know, it has caused orphans. Um, many countries who can afford have been able to help, uh, support. Uh, in fact, India uh, has set up some good example in terms of uh, providing the poor people with the food support, uh, uh, direct food support, billions of dollars are spent to protect the poor uh, through his safety net program. Uh, the rich countries are spending billions. But many countries don't have this, unfortunately. And the people are suffering on their own. The malnutrition is rising, the hunger is rising. Uh, so that all breeding concern among people. I mean, the expression in uh, you know some part of uh, Africa, uh, a, a hungry person is an angry person, uh, and and that breeds uh, conflict that brings unhappiness uh, and 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 the challenges. So climate change. Uh, I, I was just referring that as a notion, uh, the effect of that COVID in the last two years. Now, climate change effect could be much worse than that. Um, uh, the, the IPC report, which has brought uh, red alert already in the context of uh, uh, the concern, um, the rise in temperature, uh, its consequences, uh, in my over three decades of my work uh, within the World Food Program and UN system, I have firsthand uh, experienced the effect of climate change with increased frequency of drought, uh, floods, cyclone, uh, huge destruction uh, in assets and properties uh, and, and death. Uh, I mean, two examples, uh, um, uh, still shocks me is in Myanmar when I was in 2008, uh, they had one of the worst cyclones, killing 130,000 people in one go and displacing 3 million people. Um, just before coming to here, I was in Zimbabwe. Uh, there was three years of consecutive uh, drought uh, and, and resulting in uh, you know, uh, uh, life-saving support need, humanitarian assistance. Uh, currently, similar thing happening in, uh, in Madagascar, for example, um, uh, and, and huge threat uh, to, to, to life and livelihood. Uh, 
Uh, we have witnessed in India uh, the frequency of rain, the intensity of rain, the flood, uh, the, the landslides uh, in Himachal Pradesh, uh, and, 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 and the consequence of that. Um, concerning Europe, for example, uh, because of uh, you know, uh, melting of ice, uh, the sea level rise, uh, there is there is this worry about some of the island nation uh, could be underwater uh, and, and and serious threat. Um, uh, the monsoon in the in the in the Southeast Asia it's it's pushing farther and farther. Uh, uh, there is expected to be a, a decline in the yield uh, and 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 also uh, uh, affecting wildlife, uh, heat waves, uh, fire, uh, all these uh, things uh, uh, resulting in huge cost to economy and life and livelihood. Uh, so therefore, it's a very important element for all of us as a humanity to engage. I think, I think we are behind it and, and we need to work on it uh, going forward. Uh, the impact of it on the agriculture and food security uh, likely to be even more serious. So therefore, uh, adaptation to climate change uh, and, and, and different type of crops uh, um, and, and traditional uh, crops um, uh, increase in, uh, uh, in, in uh, number of uh, livelihood activities, not fully depending on, uh, on, on only farming, um, uh, policies and program towards uh, 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 towards uh, you know urbanization uh, uh, so so uh, avoiding the low lying areas uh, early warning new varieties of crops uh, uh, these are really important element of uh, uh, considerations uh, increased level of uh, insurance uh, helping uh, farmers with the insurance uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, the fourth point I want to stress is uh, the whole sustainable development goal. Uh, with all the challenges happening, the conflict, uh, the human right concern uh, and, and unhappiness uh, uh, among people uh, and the climate change, uh, we have a solution put forward uh, in the context of bringing a sustainable development goals. Uh, 17 goals, 193 countries agreed in 2015. Uh, unfortunately, it's at a threat uh, because of COVID. Um, and also, uh, you know, some of the commitment towards it uh, is not uniform uh, across all nations uh, as much as it was agreed to it uh, uh, by every state who signed to it. Uh, is still existing. So therefore, uh, from the uh, point view of food system uh, issues, uh, you know, the UN Secretary General is hosting a, a <clears throat> food system summit to, to, to really boost this uh, uh, going forward to see in the remaining 10 years, what can be done uh, and how could this be addressed? Uh, uh, and and uh, because the SDGs are also interlinked between one and the another. Out of the 17 goals, uh, you know, from poverty to, uh, to hunger, to uh, universal uh, health, uh, education, gender equality, climate change, uh, et cetera, et cetera, distant work, private, uh, to, to also uh, uh, the issue of, uh, um, uh, you know, partnership, uh, for example, uh, and, and, and also good governance, uh, a promotion of human rights, et cetera. Uh, it's all there uh, in this. So it is really uh, uh, a very, very enlightening uh, way forward in addressing uh, uh, the various challenges uh, uh, and, 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 and working towards uh, Better, better humanity, better world, uh, and and uh, uh, addressing various uh, concerns. Uh, uh, 
but 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 there is a lot to do in that. So therefore, uh, you know, the 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 commitment and engagement uh, for the world uh, is so vital. Uh, the other point I want to uh, refer is the whole growing threat of hunger and food insecurity. Um, all these factors of conflict, climate change, uh, and, and continued level of poverty uh, is, and, and, and concern like pandemics, is, are resulting in uh, rise in hunger. Today, uh, 811 million people don't have enough to eat uh, uh, before they go to bed. Uh, <clears throat> and one in nine worldwide do not have enough. This is a huge, big number. But the science is there and, 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 uh, and there is enough food produced. Uh, it's not that there is not enough food. The challenge is uh, availability of food doesn't equate to uh, access. Uh, people don't have the purchasing power uh, and, and also they don't have the adequate uh, diversity in the food. So you have a various level of micronutrients, protein, uh, vitamins, which is really needed for uh, every human being for uh, to grow and uh, to, 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 uh, uh, to nurture themselves and, and especially um, uh, you know the the uh, the particular need among children, uh, pregnant and lactating mothers are 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 different. Uh, so so and that is that is a challenge uh, of the day. Uh, uh, so um, the World Food Program, as Arpit mentioned, uh, was recognized for a 2020 Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, because the organization, all of us, uh, have been advocating the value and importance of food. Uh, and, and, and not only the importance of food, but the population who are deprived of it and, and, and their basic right elements are not being met. Uh, and, 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 and it's linked to peace and conflict. And also the concern in some situation using food as a weapon for war uh, or, or conflict, uh, you know, stopping access, uh, um, access uh, uh, to food uh, and, and, and uh, taking people hostage, uh, 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 that type of situation. And uh, uh, so therefore, uh, it is, it is, it is, uh, it's a really uh, considered as a fundamental element uh, for peace uh, going forward. Uh, uh, and, and, and in fact, the UN Security Council in 2018 uh, has recognized a resolution uh, saying humankind can never eliminate hunger without first establishing peace. Uh, uh, and, and brought that resolution uh, um, uh, uh, to right to a uh, right to right to intervene when a situation like that uh, uh, as a point. Uh, uh, so um, food insecurity a uh, lot of times also perpetuate conflicts because uh, uh, it is it is uh, uh, it is the resource issue. Uh, and 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 uh, disparity and basic need part uh, and uh, and actually uh, the Nobel Peace Prize committee when it's acknowledged WP for the Peace Prize brought all those issues uh, really very beautifully uh, uh, you know we we practice it uh, on a day to day basis uh, either working in Mozambique between the Rinamo and Frinimo negotiating with them, uh, or in Yemen, uh, I've been into some of these very conflict situation myself, uh, uh, and and making sure that you know, like people don't stay hungry. Uh, remember in Indonesia after the economic crisis, 
a lot of people lost job and there was really a hunger. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, reaching out to that uh, uh, people uh, really um, was element of contributing to stability. Uh, now, um, maybe a last point to uh, again, link up with the COVID. Uh, unfortunately, the COVID has uh, resulted in, COVID pandemic has resulted in millions of people losing jobs. Uh, and and uh, we have witnessed in India uh, uh, when people uh, the lockdown and migrants uh, and uh, and 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 you know those uh, who who don't have the resources uh, uh, being challenged uh, for their livelihood and etc. Uh, the general statistics which WFP has brought is the hunger has doubled uh, during the COVID pandemic. Uh, from 130 million to 270 million. And, and, and there is almost like 40, 45 million people in the words of starvation or famine. And, and therefore uh, uh, my executive director has been really uh, making this a plea uh, uh, in terms of um, working jointly, appealing to the whole world uh, for support and engagement. Uh, um, uh, so we are at a watershed moment for humanity in terms of, therefore, health, social, and economic disruption, uh, which, of course, needs uh, uh, all the efforts of diplomacy, all the efforts of right policies uh, and, and intervention. Uh, this is also challenging uh, the development gain Many countries have really hard work and, 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 and made uh, towards ending poverty and hunger. Uh, so uh, my hope is, uh, is uh, the, uh, the fellows uh, will have a huge contribution to make and engage with the value proposition and towards these challenges uh, the world faces today uh, uh, to contribute to the better humanity uh, tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. I have a few slides uh, to share, uh, which illustrates uh, um, the various uh, challenges the world facing from nutrition to uh, hunger and et cetera. Could you kindly run that? Aditi, if you could put up the slides, please. Aditi, could you put up the slides, please, if you can hear me? I'm, uh, I'm just trying to reach Aditi. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, I think I have the slides. I'll put it up. Okay, yeah. they're up. This one uh, just uh, uh, gives the unprecedented changes taking place. This is part of the IPC uh, six uh, report. The slides is available. Uh, uh, you can, you know, check it. Uh, uh, um, next. Uh, this is about, you know, intensity uh, and, and extreme temperature changes. Uh, you can see the challenge uh, taking place uh, and, and, and also uh, how it's going to impact uh, uh, different situation in terms of uh, uh, you know, rainfall and other things. Uh, next. Uh, again, linked to that is the precipitation and drought. Uh, you know, the effects of El Nino, El Nina, all this uh, comes in sea level rise, uh, huge concern. Next. This is about hunger uh, concern. You can see the 
and the challenge of hunger, uh, uh, growing, uh, you know, countries after countries because of combination of conflicts, uh, as well as uh, the climate change, uh, um, and of course the poverty uh, and governance issues as well at times. Next. Uh, this is about undernourishment. Uh, uh, sadly, 20% of the, uh, you know, I mean, you can see the level, different level of uh, undernourishment in, in, in different part of the world. Next. Uh, this is about children and stunting. Uh, stunting is measured as a way in terms of uh, um, you know, challenge a country or you know, countries face on nutrition uh, or malnutrition, also uh, put in broad sense of zero hunger. Uh, you see, uh, Southeast Asia has a huge problem, uh, including India. Although India is, uh, you know, self sufficient in food, uh, it even exports. Uh, in the last 40 years, the progress India has made. Uh, in agriculture size is enormous and and therefore um, uh, it is a concern and and the recent announcement uh, by the prime minister uh, of uh, fortification of rice and food uh, is a great example including efforts in terms of improving um, sanitary conditions water access uh, toilets uh, these are good efforts towards addressing uh, malnutrition. Next. Uh, this is again uh, reflects the prevalence of stunting male and female across in different countries. Uh, uh, you can see it uh, where it's rising and where it's lowest and etc. Um, and and, and uh, so right type of policy, right type of program, uh, in fact, one of the best thing I see from India is, is uh, you know, food safety net program. India has covering nearly a billion people uh, through the public distribution, uh, the midday meal um, to the students in the school, plus integrated child development program where take home ration given to children and pregnant, pregnant women and lactating mother are, are really good examples. Uh, Next. Uh, this is just to share in Southeast Asia, uh, the challenge related to nutrition from a global nutrition report of 2020. Uh, you see it, uh, I mean, you can see the various level of child stunting, child wasting, child overweight, and also women reproductive age, anemia, et cetera. Uh, and if we look at India, we have a challenge, biggest challenge is on wasting uh, as well as on anemia here. Next. Uh, this is a quick summary in terms of how the climate change uh, impacts food system and et cetera. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for this opportunity and, uh, uh, and, and I wanna wish everyone uh, great career, uh, good success uh, uh, to the future. Uh, and also I want to congratulate the uh, uh, ARPIT and ARSA for leading this uh, uh, program and uh, you know, uh, imparting with uh, extra knowledge and, uh, and support uh, uh, to the young generation taking it forward. Thank you very much and all the best and best wishes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Prishu, for uh, that really insightful and inspiring talk. I'm sure that uh, you know, this is probably the last time where we are seeing the whole of the cohort together. And uh, this was the lecture uh, you know, that leaves them with the message that all of these things are so interconnected because, uh, frankly, it's easy to understand how food is a public policy problem. Now we've begun to understand how food is a climate change problem. Uh, it's also important and what you've uh, shown us is that food indeed is also a security issue. And you know, uh, 
for peace, as you uh, rightly mentioned, we do need food. And we thank you for uh, the great inspirational words and the great work that you and the World Food Program is doing uh, in order to make the world a better place and make the world a more secure place. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for all of uh, your efforts and for uh, taking out the time. Uh, we would like to show you a quick uh, video, uh, a quick recap of the journey of GPOTS uh, so far with the fellows and uh, after which we will uh, officially uh, give out the fellow uh, certificate. So uh, if I may ask the social media team to uh, play the video, please. Sure. The reason why we are doing all of this that we are doing is eventually to have a more sustainable world. The thing that we take the most pride in is our, is our diversity and not just in terms of you know, gender or cultures or nationalities. Uh, also about the professional backgrounds and the age groups you come from. Uh, and you will realize by the end of this fellowship that that has been one of the most uh, important driving forces for your personal and professional development going forward. AMC SSC is a committee I serve on the steering committee of. It's a UN mandated organization that works at the UN office in South South Cooperation. So we advocate for NGOs globally in the uh, global South. So that's about 120 countries because you know emerging developing economies. So 120 countries, including India and China, since they fall into the global South. And with that committee, we advocate for uh, empowering CSOs, NGOs. Um, to the United Nations and we represent them to the UN Office of South South Cooperation. So there's a lot of you know policymakers, NGOs, environmental advocates who really use the idea of an environmental right and constitutionalizing an environmental right to encourage political change, to encourage social change. Right? My point here is that the private sector will not be um, uh, in the sustainability path if governments are not able to uh, uh, level the economic playing field. In terms of um, stabilizing the global climate, uh, we have to change the way we use and produce and distribute, etc., energy, because we cannot uh, we cannot uh, avert uh, the, the progression of climate change if we continue in the same way as we the basic criteria for synthesis is you need to have a strong grounding in that particular area. Because if you don't understand that subject, there's no way you're going to be able to uh, do anything with it. The feminism, as you know, is not about women per se, but it is about the advocation and the support of equality because I believe women are equal and should be equal in everything. I want uh, absorption uh, by the PRC uh, um, or the abandonment of Taiwan by the United States and the international community have been, uh, you know, themes that have been exploited by companies like Microsoft is a good example that have committed even not just to become net zero, but they want to sort of offset their historic emissions as well. So those are incredibly ambitious targets and, and that's good. You know, we want, we want that ambition. We want that awareness we normally uh, end up saying that uh, it's it's the responsibility of the government uh, to to sort out most of the issues which grapple us and which face us science of attribution of being able to yeah. say you know has has changed so much that now you are able to look at the probability of events happening and the link to climate change, the link to uh, fossil fuels, we're seeing incredible things happening in courts these days. In general, I think that uh, uh, it's fair to say that every position is negotiable. You know, when people say that uh, it's not negotiable, well, in the end, uh, it is negotiable. It has to be negotiable. That's why you have 
you know, these uh, UN and other international uh, organizations so that people can come together. The only time some positions are non-negotiable is when you see one country uh, exercising a, a, a veto. You know, I think that the most important thing for policymakers is to really understand the technology that they're dealing with. And this has been, I've, I think, a major deficit, at least in the United States government, that we just haven't had people who understand the technology well enough. And the fact that the G7 came together and pledged an additional billion doses of the COVID vaccine next year on top of the billion that's already been promised. This is important. Of course, there's been criticism saying that's not enough. Of course, it's not enough. But still, that's a billion. And I think this is the best part of our G Sports Fellowship. It's not asking you to come with a certain set of requirements. It's not asking for a vocal. It's not asking for you to have completed a PhD or a master's degree or anything as such. It's simply a place for you to learn. And that's that's all all they're asking for is your motivation. When we think of GPOT fellowship, uh, they're basically focusing into public policy, uh, diplomacy and uh, sustainability. And keeping that in mind, I think anyone who is a uh, one who is interested in international relations or maybe some sort of climate change, environment, waste, or um, <laughs> any sort of causes that you want to lead with an impact and purpose, I think this is the right place to start it off. All this has done has made me more and more curious about a lot of things. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's really pushing me to read about different countries more and, uh, you know, increase my spectrum of knowledge. So mm -hmm. I think the world is our shell and we can, we can like just gather the knowledge. There's a plethora of knowledge out there. So One, the plethora of mentors that you have, uh, but more importantly, I feel like the network that you can create, not just amongst the mentors who are uh, who are way into their field, but also your like co-fellows, people who are yeah. in like a variety of sectors. There's, there's lawyers in our in our cohort, there's NGO professionals, there's researchers, there's MPP students. So getting that entire transdisciplinary like insight. Uh, mm -hmm. That seemed really interesting to me. The most important aspect of this fellowship is that it has a good mix of theory and practice. You know, the sessions that we are exposed to uh, are sometimes very, very theoretically grounded. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, the workshops that we uh, participate in are uh, also we delve into the practical side of things. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. for, for example, uh, you know, case study workshops where we are given real time um, world crisis issues and we are, you know, are expected to, uh, you know, come up with uh, different forms of analysis and uh, potential solutions to those problems. And mm, it was, it was more of a revelatory kind of a thing that it was a type of a buffet being served to me exactly according to my needs. So, wow. I wanted to prepare myself uh, for my future studies uh, because as being from a traditional Indian background who has not had that, you know, I say at par excellent education which is available outside, I wanted to equip myself with the requisite skills. And Although there was this, this seed of um, sustainability that sort of was always there, I think it just wasn't tapped into. And um, GPods is my transitioning phase into that new world. So I believe this fellowship is not primarily targeting mm. a particular area of study or a particular area of practice in, in their profession. But it is for mm. those who have this burning desire to contribute to the policy making. Now, if you are someone who is interested in uh, public policy or diplomacy or something to do with climate change sustainability you need to apply for this public policy is a very interdisciplinary field so is diplomacy and so is climate change in the current context so if you try to go into that field without any help or without any support system mm. things might appear opaque so G pods is that thing which removes that opaqueness and it will give you clear vision wow. of how to pursue things. So feel free to mention some skills that you were able to use today. Go ahead, Israel. I was just about to say, looking at the skills of diplomacy right here. Um, well, 
in the past like three simulations I've done this year, I've always been like an underdog position. <laughs> so oh. we did another simulation earlier where um, I was in the Taiwan group in a, in a dispute between the US and China. Yeah. And right. in this one, as another underdog, All right. So uh, this is the moment when all of you can officially feel nostalgic, uh, reflect on all that you have done, all the times that we have shared, uh, and also the time to feel hopeful and ecstatic about all that is to come. You now know people and you, can ident you could identify everyone who was uh, in the video, your people who did not exist for you until three months back. And that's a brilliant feeling. It is a brilliant feeling for us. Uh, but I think we go a step further as we always do with GPods and all, already consider you part of our families. Uh, now, uh, since uh, Mr. Bishow is, is short in time, so we'll go ahead with the certificate uh, dispensation. And we want uh, Bishow to be here while we're giving out the certificates. I know he has things to do, so he'll probably be leaving us right after the, uh, the, uh, the certificate distribution. Uh, but before I do that, I must also acknowledge that GPods is, and this all comes in the vote of thanks, guys. So I'm kind of giving it away. But GPods is what it is because of all of you, but also as much uh, because of the mentors that we have. And I just want to acknowledge that we have some of our mentors here. Uh, John Osterman has joined in. Uh, Manish Swarasia has joined in, who's who is a bit of a superstar himself, and who he delivered that excellent lecture. We'll be joined by uh, John Dixon soon, and our very own resident. Uh, IR expert Jonathan Cummings is here as well. We have Curtis Reynolds, who's who's always been a major, major support system for GPods Fellowship. So thank you so much, Curtis, for joining us at the convocation. It's it's an absolute pleasure to have you. Now, uh, I would like to personally thank all of you. And this conversation will go on way beyond the convocation. You'd not just be hearing from us. You'll be hearing from a lot of our fellows as well. So please brace yourself because that's going to come in some time, I hope. You're well prepared. Uh, all right. So that being said, let's get on with the the moment that the three months have been uh, building up to uh, the certificates. Uh, can we have the screen share? So so first of all, uh, let's start with Arti. Arti, I always crib about the fact that people uh, whose names start with A get called on the most, but this is the one time that you can be happy that the name starts with a double A. So. Aarti, congratulations on graduating. It was a pleasure to have you as part of the fellowship. Uh, we have Abhinandan next. Abhinandan, uh, some of our uh, most fun talks in the GPods have been with you. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you part of, as a part of the fellowship. All the best for all of your future efforts. Uh, we have uh, Alif next. Alif, uh, so many things you brought to the, to the classroom. Even to the International Ideation Summit, we had a debate just because he kind of arm twisted our, us into having one. It was a pleasure having you and all the very best for your future. Uh, we have Amit. Amit, uh, pleasure having you as a part of the cohort. I'm sure we'll be interacting a lot more given the fact that we share professional space in some circles and wishing you the very best. Uh, Anshli, I don't know if you're here, but I have interacted with you at the very beginning of the fellowship and it was truly uh, breathtaking to, uh, to know all that you're doing and all that you will be doing. We wish you all the best. Uh, we have Anirudh next. Anirudh, I pulled his leg for three months for uh, leaving uh, Indian shores for greener pastures. And uh, despite all of that, uh, he's, he's, he's been one of our, uh, someone we've been very proud of and uh, Anirudh, and as for all of you, I really look forward to all the brilliant things you're going to achieve in life. So congratulations, Anirudh. Uh, we have Anshul next. Anshul, hi. Uh, I, I'm sure you're doing absolutely brilliantly in your next venture. It was a pleasure having you uh, as a part of the fellowship. You know you contributed a lot. And I will be keeping an eye out on all the things that you achieve in the future. So thank you for being a part of the cohort and congratulations again. Anurag, 
I, I congratulate you. I also pity you because a lot of your classes were at 4.30 a.m., 5.30 a.m. California time. Uh, you still appeared in the classes. That requires some results. So thank you for, for being a part of the cohort. You really added a new dimension to it. And congratulations. All the best. I'm sure this is uh, just the beginning. Uh, then we have Anurag Yadav. Uh, Anurag, congratulations on graduating. All the best for your future. Looking forward to, to listening more from you as, you as we have. Arlena. Congratulations on graduating. I hear that you were working on your capstone till late last night. I hope you're all, uh, all filled up on coffee so that you can be a part of this uh, convocation ceremony and enjoy yourself as much as you can. It was a pleasure to have you as a part of the cohort and, and we'll keep in touch. All the very best for the future and congratulations again. Okay, Gina, uh, it isn't just what you brought to the classroom. It's also the ideas that you've brought outside the classroom, which I think has, has made the experience of GPOTS richer for us. Uh, and we're looking forward to taking those ideas forward. And there's so much to look forward to with each of you. Thank you so much, Gina. Congratulations again. It was a pleasure having you as a part of the cohort. Uh, we have Diamantis. Diamantis, uh, we uh, are absolutely grateful for you. Uh, you were one of the few fellows who were actually referred to by our mentor, one of our mentors. And it was truly brilliant, the kind of correspondence that you shared, the kind of ideas that you shared. So thank you so much. And, and we wish you all the very best. Ishan, I have spent three months of my life explaining to international mentors how Ishan is a common name. And one half of that reason is you, because you also share my surname, which is not, which is not a common surname. But uh, I have also spent a lot of time explaining to mentors that our age range is 17, 18 to whatever we have in the future because of you, because you were the youngest of the lot. Uh, but by no means uh, you were the youngest in your thought. You, you held your own in front of all of these stalwarts uh, of fellows. And I'm sure this conversation is, is going to continue. Congratulations. So, so excited about what the future holds for you and, and congratulations and all the best for all of that as well. And Ishan will have to spend the rest of his life justifying that he has not signed his own certificate for the fellowship. Oh, no, no. His, his spelling is different, but he's going to have uh, issues with Google Scholar at some point, I'm assuming. Okay. Uh, from one Ishan to the other, I copy paste all of my comments from Ishan to this Ishan. But Ishan also generally, uh, I was mentioning this to Arpit once, that uh, I, for all of you who do not know, I discuss a lot of environmental philosophy in my class. And there were a couple of points when I had to prepare 1.5x because I knew that Ishan was in the room and he probably asked me about the Leviathan and, and all of those things. So Ishan, what I really appreciate about GPOTS for me uh, as a selfish person, it, it challenges me, it helps me grow and it is because of people like you who challenge us on an everyday basis. The conversations will continue. Congratulations again. And so, so, so grateful uh, to have you as a part of the cohort. Uh, we have Ishita. Uh, Ishita, it was, it was a tough task explaining so many things uh, that you have done to mentors uh, when we were introducing you. Uh, you've been in the private sector. You've worked on sustainability. You're in the startup space. So many things that you've done. Uh, and I'm just uh, grateful to have you as a part of the cohort. Congratulations again, and all the very best for your future. Jairaj, uh, it, right from the time uh, I, I, the selection committee was discussing your application, I was very interested in what you bring to the cohort. Uh, and congratulations, I, I think you have succeeded in, in, in meeting the high expectations I had of you. And all the very best for the future. I'm sure we're gonna be meeting soon. Uh, whenever that happens. Uh, Karina, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Congratulations on graduating. The big day has finally arrived and all the best for all the future, all that the future holds for you. We have Kushpu. Uh, Kushpu, we've had a lot of conversations over the past three months. I really hope that none of those conversations ever stop. I want to be a part of all the brilliant things you have planned for yourself. Sometimes I get uh, I feel like I am responsible for all of the things that you have to achieve because we've spoken so much about all the, all the things that you want to achieve. 
I assure you that uh, we'll always be with you uh, every step of the way. Congratulations again and all the very best. Lena, <clears throat> thank you for sending in that capstone uh, uh, very late in the night. Uh, it, it woke me up from my slumber. Uh, it was a pleasure having you. Uh, you have added so many dimensions. You've been so helpful with some of the other fellows helping out with their uh, applications and academic experiences and everything. So uh, congratulations and all the very best. And we'll be visiting Frankfurt soon and seeing you there. Uh, we have Malakai next. Malakai, I apologize for the cricket commentator comment. I think that should be your last plan. Uh, there are so many things that await you. For those of you who do not know the joke, one of the mentors told Malakai that you have a wonderful voice. And I told him that if international diplomacy does not work, you should certainly try cricket commentary because you're from the UK. However, uh, I am having interacted with you, having seen you interact as well. I am, I'm, I can bet my bottom dollar that we are going to be uh, excited for all that you achieve in the times to come. And uh, you always have us. So uh, good luck with all that you wish to achieve and keep, keep being as ambitious as you are. Uh, all the best and, and congratulations again, Malika. Uh, Meghna, I remember before the first early bird deadline when I got a random call uh, on my phone asking about the GPAX fellowship and uh, ever since then I've been interacting with you. I also especially appreciate how you held conversations in office hours. There were times when I felt like I was the uh, fellow and you were the moderator and that's how it should be. That's what networking sessions are all about. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being a part of the cohort. Uh, congratulations again and all the very best for the future. Melissa, absolutely killed it in the panel discussion on ideation summit uh, there was a time when i thought that i did not have enough questions to ask melissa because she'd give, given all the answers already and that's been melissa throughout the fellowship uh, you come from a, a very very established school of gpods fellows uh, the kind of gpods fellows you've interacted with in the past are ones that we hold very dear and you've only helped establish that uh, we are looking forward to such applicants further uh, because if that's the standard that you've set, uh, others are going to have a hard time living up to it. So thank you so much for being a part of the fellowship cohort. All the very best for the future and congratulations. Take a couple of days off, Melissa. You really, really should. You don't have to work 48 hours a day. Uh, Navroz, uh, hello. Uh, you are our uh, international diplomacy expert. Uh, some of the conversations that you, you had uh, were were truly uh, brilliant. In fact, I remember this one instance where I, when the mentor officer was getting over, and I was supposed to thank the mentor for coming in. And Navroz took up that mantle. Uh, she said that, "Listen, I have a statement to make," and I was like, "All right, go ahead." And Navroz did everything for me. I did not have to add a word. And that's that's Navroz for you. Uh, thank you so much, Navroz. We we are richer uh, in our experiences, in our thoughts uh, because of you. And uh, congratulations. This is a big day. I'm sure you're going to do tremendous things in the future. And I'm really looking forward to it. All the very best. Uh, Pratik, hi. Congratulations on graduating. I know you're in the same boat as Anurag Kamal. Uh, and you have been attending sessions at California time, which is, uh, which is saying a lot. And thank you for being a part of the cohort. Congratulations. All the best. Uh, if you ever want to leave the Microsoft shores, you know that are a lot of opportunities in India available to you. Uh, all right, we have PK. Hi, PK. Uh, I think of all the fellows I've interacted with you the most over the past couple of days, especially. Uh, it's been truly a pleasure. I was mentioning to PK uh, uh, just yesterday that uh, he is a full-time advocate. He is a litigator. He litigates every day. He does his briefs. He, he does everything within the litigation sphere. And then he was uh, telling me how he could not take out time for a certain thing. And I told him that when I was at your stage, I would not have dreamed of doing so many things at the same time. So he's done a course with Amtad. He's done the GPATH Fellowship. He's litigating so many things uh, together. And that requires a superhuman effort, but I'm sure that we're only scratching the surface of PK with all of these superhuman efforts. I'm sure there's a lot to come. So congratulations, PK. Thank you for adding so much to the cohort and all the very best. 
We have our eyes on you. We're seeing what you're doing. Uh, finally, uh, actually not finally, we have quite a few to go, but Rachita, I have absolutely not minced my words about the kind of profile that you have and how that excited me when we were sitting on the selection committee and you did not disappoint us. You brought so much of behavioral and psychological and all of those elements into our conversation. Uh, we spoke a lot, we discussed your capstone and I think it was one of the better conversations I've had. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of the cohort. Congratulations and all the very best. Okay. I'm being told that I have to rush through this. Raghav, uh, you are a bit of an all-rounder and to think that you're what, barely 20. Uh, pleasure having you as a part of the cohort. Pleasure being in the same circle as you and pleasure also being your uh, thesis advisor in, in the coming years. Uh, I wish you all the very best and congratulations on graduating uh, from the GPOTS Fellowship today as it says on the 31st day of August of 2021. Uh, Rajshri, uh, we shared our alma mater and that does not reflect very well on, on us, <laughs> if I may be very honest, but this is a recorded version. So I'll stick to the script. Congratulations. And I wish you all the best. You have now a whole circle of lawyers, including your GPOTS fellows and myself to take uh, take advice from if you need anything, or also guide us wherever you think we need some guidance. We look forward to interacting with you a lot more in the coming time. Uh, Ratna Dityasin, thank you so much for being a part of the cohort. It is uh, truly a pleasure having you. Uh, I noticed you in the ideation summit with uh, all dressed up and all. It was surprising to see you in, in that clothing, but uh, I hope the conversations continue and it was a true, uh, uh, truly a pleasure for being a for you to be a part of the cohort for us. And we wish you all the very best. Sahiti, I spoke of superhuman in terms of PK, uh, but you're really a superwoman because I've seen you in classes holding your two twins and attending sessions and interacting in those sessions and saying that you'll have to mute yourself because your uh, kids need some attention, but that is seriously uh, a tremendous effort that also goes to show how dedicated you are to the field of sustainability and public policy and diplomacy, but I know that you come from a sustainability field, so I'll stick to it. Also, I'm obviously biased towards sustainability. So congratulations again, and I wish you all the very best for the future. Santosh, uh, congratulations, some interesting, interesting comments, and I, I have a slideshow of all the very interesting comments that Santosh has made in classes, some of the questions that he's asked, I'm sure Manish is with us. Manish might remember a few when Santosh had asked him about electric vehicles and how, how they work and that sort of a thing. So it was a pleasure having you, Santosh. Congratulations. All the very best for the future. It was a pleasure having you, Reddy. Sartak, uh, if speaking to you once was not enough, I'm here again uh, in the same day. Uh, congratulations again. I hope uh, you keep on achieving all the things and all the all the various plans you have for yourself, all of them do succeed and you uh, achieve great heights in, in your uh, career. Congratulations again. We have Shelly. Shelly, it was a pleasure interacting with you. I've seen you grow during the fellowship. Uh, you barely interacted uh, in the beginning and now look at you, you're interacting, you're passing comments, you're sharing articles, you have your video on. And uh, I also, would like to tell everyone that one of my favorite books uh, is what is one of Shelley's favorite books as well. So we share that uh, connection as well. It's called The Uninhabitable Earth by David Wallace Wells. So Shelley, it was a pleasure having you as a part of the cohort. I really hope this association does not stop here. Congratulations and all the very best for the future. I'm sure we'll be talking a lot more in the future. Shihari, the kind of uh, initiative Shihari took uh, the way he interacted, uh, it is something that we learn from on an every day, uh, day basis from all of you, but also from Srihari. Congratulations. It was a pleasure having you as a part of the cohort and all the very best uh, for all that you're trying to achieve in the future. Again, we have a little lawyer's corner in the GPOTS Fellowship cohort, so you know whom to contact if you need anything. Uh, Skarmante, thank you so much. Sorry, Srikant, thank you so much for being a part of the cohort. I'm, I'm obviously uh, skipping names because I'm rushing through it. I'm getting direct messages, by the way, saying that you, should, you need to rush. Okay, really quickly. Srikant, thank you so much. Congratulations uh, for being a part of the cohort. I wish you all the best. 
skarma thank you so much again uh, you were uh, one of the one of the uh, uh, few who who spoke less but spoke so well when you did and your ideas are just waiting to be uh, exploding at the surface of all of the conversations that you're going to be a part of all the very best uh, then we have srishti uh, i already know that you have great things planned so i would not comment i just hope that you keep us posted on all the wonderful things you do congratulations again and all the best uh, i was told by suchita that she won't be able to speak later but suchita this is time for me to thank you to congratulate you to wish you all the very best thank you for being a part of the cohort and we really look forward to all that you do in life uh, we're always here so you should always keep in touch sukriti congratulations all the best i know uh, Three months have passed by really quickly, but I hope that you have something to uh, take back home from this experience that you have had with us. Uh, we are not going anywhere, as I keep mentioning. Uh, we have Suparna. Hi, Suparna. Uh, I want to make a give a specific shout out to the dolphin caricatures in Suparna's background every time she had her video on. I think that was a very good addition to otherwise see this class. uh congratulations on graduating it was a pleasure having you all the very best uh, for your future tamari from the country georgia not the state georgia uh it was a pleasure having you congratulations on graduating wish you the very best for the future and i'm sure whenever we're in the us next uh, we're going to be catching up along with john obviously john is our resident uh, uh organizer All right, uh, Tanima, thank you for for being a part of the cohort. Congratulations, all the very best, and we look forward to future conversations. Pitli, <clears throat> uh, a couple of days back, I was discussing a fellow's capstone draft that she had sent across, and I was telling Arpit that I have been struggling with the German law journal draft, and I wish it was half as good. Uh, this is coming from someone who's not written earlier. so the kind of depth you've shown the kind of resonance that has come from you on everything not just sustainability uh, and i'm very proud of you i'm also going to uh, ask you for the details of that background airplane which has sort of been like the star of all the fellows and of all the sessions that it has figured in and we should probably have it as jeepers memorabilia at some point but thank you so much tritly we look forward to all that you're trying going to achieve and congratulations again Uh, Vanessa, uh, again, you come in that small net of people. I should apologize to for for the kind of timings at which you had to attend these sessions. I have not apologized to Alif, uh, but I should as well. Vanessa, thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you. Uh, you were always always so full of energy in those discussions, and and a lot of the times I could see that you were half asleep, but you were always there. So thank you so much. Congratulations and all the best. Uh, Yash, uh, I hope you're feeling better to begin with. and it was a pleasure having you as a part of the cohort you you stay in our neighborhood in delhi so i'm sure we'll be meeting soon i wish you the very best best and congratulations again and finally you hina the disadvantage of having a name that starts with a y is that during the graduation ceremony it comes up last uh but it was a pleasure uh i think i've interacted a lot with you and and all of those interactions have been have been uh, learning experiences i hope that you stick to all the three bullet points that you have planned for yourself in the near future and you only explore further bullet points going forward congratulations it was a pleasure and i wish you all the very best so guys uh that's all of the certificates all of the certificates that you guys have earned over the past uh so many months uh, it feels like it went back went by in a couple of days guys but it's really been three months uh what we'll do now is uh i would i would uh, one second i'm just checking if i've missed out on anything so i'll i'll pass on the floor to uh, bisho if he'd like to congratulate or say a final few words and then we'll come to the fellows to understand how their experiences have been with like a 30 second uh, news bite sort of statements on their experiences okay bisho over to you okay yeah. what i hear from you is such an amazing uh reflection of everybody so actually it's uh, it's so impressive to hear you arsan and and to remember you and to describe each of your fellows uh in that short time so big compliment i think you all putting a lot of effort 
and and it does seem to me everyone is really outstanding. So compliments and congratulations to each fellows, and I want to wish all the best and uh, success in life. Uh, you know, journey up and down. As long as you are positive uh, uh, and and persistent, uh, you will all succeed in life. So all the best and best wishes. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Krishna. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Bishop. You have a nice so, day. Thank you. Thank you. So for all of our mentors who've also joined us, Curtis, John, John, John is a mentor and also a brother to all, all of you. And, and he calls himself uh, the uncle of GPOT's fellows uh, because he thinks that Arpit and I are parents. So he's always he, He's the goofy uncle. He's the goofy <laughs> uncle. But we have John Osterman, we have Kurt, Curtis, we have Manish, uh, and we'll also be joined by John Dixon. We'll, I'll, I'm giving you a fair warning, guys. I'll come to you for a couple of statements after our fellows speak. So if you need 30 seconds, you need to prepare for those 30 seconds of time. Please feel free to do that. But as we do that, let me come to the fellows and get them to share their experiences because this is about you guys. You guys are graduating. Uh, this is a virtual setup, so I could not invite you for uh, drinks or coffee or whatever it would be. But uh, let's, let's try to come as close as it is uh, possible to it. Let's start with Yuhina. We're going in reverse alphabetical order, guys. Arti, you're safe. Um, hello, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, joining in. Uh, this is absolutely a pleasure to be part of GPOTS Fellowship. And I have learned so much in the last three months that I'm, I'm so grateful to both Arpit and Nishan. And I feel like I can say this for everyone as well. But there's so many notes that I have right now that I want to keep, like, get back to and put them in place. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you uh, we're going we're gonna to ask you for those notes at some point. You know. <laughs> uh, Yash, I don't know if you're here. I don't know if you're feeling okay. No, I think, yeah, is Yash back? Because No, he's not. Uh, no, he's not feeling well. Quickly, so we, we hope that Yash gets well soon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wish you the very best, Yash, if you're watching the recording. Uh, and Sartak, since you missed your name being called out, you can watch <laughs> the recording and revel in the good things that I said about you. That does not happen very often. I mean, this was... Okay. The it was the worst yeah. time of the vaccine today. I'm sorry, guys, but I missed it because I was sleeping. It just messes you up, the vaccine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, please do take care and, and take rest as well, Sartak. Like you have the recording uh, after this, so don't worry about it. Absolutely. We'll go to Vanessa very quickly. Is Vanessa here? I'm going to just jump uh, across these uh, silences, guys, because we have to rush. Uh, Titli. Hi, everyone. Um, since we, I have to be quick, I just want to say that uh, I, can't, I can't be quick with everything I want to say about GPOD. It's been an amazing experience. Thank you, Ishan and Arpit, for putting this together. Uh, I think it's just so much learning, so much growth, and I'm just feeling very nostalgic that it's ending. But uh, it has been a watershed moment, Arpit, like you said. So thank you for that last push. Thank you, Titli. All right, we have uh, Suparna next. Suparna, I'm not sure if you can see. Hi, Hi Suparna. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yes. I'm joining with a different background today. Uh, uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful journey. I would really like to thank the entire GPODS uh, team, uh, not only Arpit and Ashan, but uh, I don't know, just on top of my head, Aditi, Shishti, everyone to help out with this. Uh, I... I was expect I wasn't expecting it to be such a such a eye opening uh, journey and uh, the interactions with the fellow and I will be very honest I used to join the office hour to listen to what other people ask questions and learn from that as even so it was a wonderful uh, wonderful experience thank you so much thank you so much uh, Superna it was a pleasure having you as I said. Uh, I'm skipping names, guys, because I cannot see you. Maybe you've changed your name and uh, you're here. So if that is the case, please do change your name back to whatever your name is. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, go to uh, Sri Hari. Hi, Sri Hari. Hello. Uh, I'm, I'm extremely full of the power of the Shri Muhammad and 
in past few months, uh, thankful to everyone, uh, to the GPOT team and to the fellows uh, for teaching me. Thank you so much, Srihari. Uh, we'll move to Shelly. Hello. So it has been a very fulfilling experience. And um, I've told this to Ishan before that all my fellowships really mean so much to me. And I just want to thank again. That's all. Thank you so much, Shelly. Uh, the conversation has just started, sir. Uh, you can still speak with us and tell us all the good things about GPOD's fellowship in the time to come. Uh, we'll go to Sartak. Sartak, you have your moment in the sun. What matters is whether you get to speak or not. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, so, I mean, I'm short of words. I've, you know, I've explored this domain for the first time and I've learned so much more than I actually thought. Uh, I don't look particularly good because of the vaccine, so I'm keeping the video off. I don't want to scare everybody off. Um, and uh, going to the part where, I mean, like this international relations geopolitics has just interested me so much now that, I mean, I've, I've subscribed China updates and Afghanistan updates in my Google News in the morning. So that's like a staple diet for me now. And I mean, meeting all these beautiful people, I've made memories and I've most importantly, I've made friends here. So like everybody I talk to daily, in the GPods community, like cheers. I mean, I'm going to stay in touch. And whenever, whenever I'm visiting your city, country, hashtag, whatever, you guys make sure that I see everything and you give me a place to stay. I want to save money. Thanks. Love you all. Very, very, very slightly done. Sartak. All right. We'll move to uh, Santosh. Hi, Santosh. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I have to admit that uh, I wasn't able to, <laughs> up to the mark, to really get uh, consume all the knowledge that he's passing on so i i thoroughly enjoyed all the workshops rather than the lecture sessions because workshops really made me interact with other fellows uh, at, uh if not if not for the other fellows yeah so i mean I, the learning experience would not have been what it was so far uh, so looking forward for many more sessions and also the opportunities that come through th uh, with this fellowship. Thank you. Thank you so much, Santosh. So all of you who are wondering when we're going to be meeting next, remember the first weekend of the next cohort is our alumni engagement section. So all of you are going to be there. All the cohorts are going to be there and you'll, you'll be seeing each other soon. But we're going to you know, uh, build up the suspense as to when that's going to be. And you'll get your invites in due time. Okay. Uh, we're going to Raghav. Raghav, I do not know if you can switch on your mic. I know that there's a bit of an issue with your mic. Yes, Alif, I, I hear the word cry there. Okay, uh, Rachita? Uh, hi, am I audible? Yeah. Uh, I really don't know what to say because I just joined a few minutes back and I hadn't uh, thought of anything to say. But I would uh, just like to say that I had a really good time. To be very honest, initially I had my doubts like, have I chosen the right fellowship? Uh, am I investing in the right place? But I... I, I do not regret it even like uh, a bit. I enjoyed myself a lot. I learned so much. And even as uh, Santosh mentioned, like the workshops, the assignments were uh, very useful. And I, whoever, if anyone ever asks me about, you know, uh, whether they should join GPods or not, I am always going to root for it. Uh, and uh, I've made some really close friends, especially Titli, Arlena, uh, Savarna, uh, Anirudh, uh, and I learned a lot from uh, a lot of other people, Ishan Mishri, Abhinandan, um, and uh, Yuhina, Anshul, I mean, I can go on, <laughs> I can, uh, Tina, and I'm, I'm just scro scrolling through everyone's name, <laughs> so I don't miss out anyone, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, I'm sorry I've taken up so much time. <laughs> And a special thanks to Ishan and Arpit. Uh, this time I did not say so. <laughs> and uh, other people always answering my questions. And Malakai and Alif uh, and Khushbu, I always wanted to work with you I guys. Should have, I should have let Rachita do the vote of thanks uh, because yeah. she's covered everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. thank you so much, Rachita. It was truly a pleasure having you. As I said, I was biased from day one. I am very interested in, in the kind of profile you have, the kind of thoughts you get. Uh, got to the uh, sessions was truly, truly uh, amazing. Thank you so much. 
and i would send you a special invite as i would to all of you for all the lectures that are open for all of you in the future cohorts so please do yep. join in whenever you can thank you rachita again all right uh, pk you're up next thank you so much ishan and arpit in fact starting this fellowship with a self doubt whether i would make it in the first place because i thought i would i was not a good fit because of the background that i come from and i had no idea about g pots to begin with and thanks to arpit because he explained to me in words on linkedin chat and that's a fantastic journey that that made me through and starting off with all the courses that arpit and nishan took mind blowing and i've had a great fun with all the fellows and so many other deadlines commitments i think this is what makes you the new person i think this is just a beginning for of what is there to come so i i i hope to see everyone sail through the boat and then catch on the ship sometime soon thank you all right how long did it take to come up with that pk <laughs> <laughs> it was the same journal note <laughs> <laughs> all right okay okay makes sense shit i should have come to you for that okay uh, pratik we come to you uh, hi everyone i want to take this opportunity to like thank the gpoch team the mentors and all the fellows for a wonderful wonderful experience this was like a very different world to the one that i'm used to with my education and experience but i felt right at home at gpoch and it's been a great learning experience and i'm very excited to see what the fellows are able to achieve going on from here and then build on this network that i have got as part of this thank you thank you, you pratik thank you i know that it's what 6 am there so your excuse was sounding a little sleepy if that is the case <laughs> yeah all right okay we go yeah. to navroz hi ishan thank you i'm actually traveling right now so i can't switch on my camera because i don't trust my internet connection i have my apologies for that uh but first of all at the outset thank you uh, arpit and ishan for putting this brilliant brilliant fellowship together uh and for the absolutely amazing team that you guys have curated i've reached out to aditi on uh, several occasions swishti on so many occasions uh and they have been just so warm and forthcoming uh i mean i wish i had words to thank all of you um and for bringing together this amazing community of mentors and fellows every single minute that i have spent as a part of this fellowship has been such a steep learning curve and i'm going to be recommending uh you know literally this this fellowship to every person who comes across my path and 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 wants a good uh experience um and and i i think i mean the, almost the entire world shut down due to this horrible pandemic that we have learning has been ongoing and i couldn't be more grateful thank you for your classes for your lectures for the mentors and for this really warm uh community that that you guys have put together and i think i'm going to be reaching out to the both of you and uh, of course to everyone uh here so much for often uh, in these coming few days thank you so much thank you thank you looking forward to those thank you so Absolutely. much uh melissa uh thank you i just want to say that this was an absolutely amazing opportunity for me and i just want to thank arpit and nishan and the whole gpod team all the mentors that we've had and especially all the fellows that i've got to interact with um i think that i've really enjoyed all the lectures the officers and especially the case study workshops and the simulations it's just been a riot it's just absolutely been a crazy time in my life and i think that it was exactly what i needed at this point in my life as well and i'm really grateful for this opportunity unity and i think i've spent a lot of you know sleepless nights on zoom with a lot of you and it's just been an amazingly fun time for me so i look forward to keeping in touch with everyone thank you melissa uh and it was a pleasure having you as i said already you should take some time off seriously <laughs> uh make now Hi everyone. Good evening. Uh, it's raining cats and dogs here, so I'm gonna keep the video off. Um, Arpit, Ishan, firstly, thank you so much for organizing this brilliant fellowship. Like, um, I had been working for about three years, and I had forgotten what it was like to learn on a daily basis, and it's really just helped me get back into the whole learning mode, and it's made me really thirsty for knowledge. So, thank you. Uh, um special thanks to aditi and shrishti like you guys have been fantastic aditi especially cuz she was there for me during a very difficult time and you know she was always warm like navro said every time we reached out to her she was super supportive and 
genuinely all the, the the cohort itself the fellows you guys were brilliant like i've learned so much from every one of you and i've made some really good friends so i look forward to staying in touch with all of you and yeah just really grateful that i got to know all of you thank you thank you meekna uh, malakai hello again everyone um at the beginning of the um the g plus fellowship the thing that I was more overwhelmed with was not the mentors and what they could do but the fellow styles amongst pretty much the cohort because I was entering it as a master student and of course looking back on everything it's good to die at the stage right now but seeing myself surrounded by lawyers policy workers people at the beginning of their careers I was like okay wow <laughs> everybody's already a step ahead of me but as I spoke and interacted with everybody including the mentors and the cohorts um especially when we spoke about international relations and things and diplomacy stuff I was like oh I know quite a few things here I can contribute quite effectively here but it was also great learning so much from other people too um and it's a case where learning more about public policy from this um fellowship scheme um it helps like kind of fill in the gap in the career path that I want to take towards becoming a mediator in the future and in saying that I'm pretty much at the start of my job search now so it's going to be quite interesting moving from here with like a whole group pushing me forward in a sense so thank you everyone thank, thank you malaka uh we'll go to khushboo now khushboo i just i think everybody has sounded so well it's absolutely i i would say that an absolute honor to be the part of this wonderful and inspiring community in fact uh, like i can strongly say that that how we started and how we are now ending it here it's like everybody has grown from strength to strength and not just from the uh, i think i feel from the professional front on the professional front but also on the personal front as well so i mean i learned so much from all the interaction the conversation i had with so many fellows and also um, with you or with anishan as well which i'm always going to cherish and uh, i hope we all stay in touch and keep inspiring each other so it's wonderful to be here Absolutely. Thank you, Thank Kushpu. You. Thank you, Kushpu. Uh, we have Ishita next. Thank you, Manish, for your kind message. Hi. Thank you so much, Ishan. I'm kind of overwhelmed after listening to so many fellows, and and just uh, want to sum it up in a few lines that um, I think this fellowship has really changed my perspective and a lot of given me new horizons to learn more and explore more. and uh, my purpose was to just explore public policy and sustainability and i think i've i'm overwhelmed with the kind of knowledge and learning i've gained through these three months and this this fellowship had just become my routine so i think now not having the lectures would be kind of missing the uh, lectures every day that there are no more lectures going on and i think arpit was really kind to guide me whenever i uh, I never required I'm really looking forward to speak to Ishana as well I just got sick so that why and I think all the fellows were wonderful amazing people to speak to work with and I think I enjoyed every bit of it the most important thing which I want to say is that like I finally enjoyed education after a long time <laughs> because the system kind of system we have really it sucks so I think uh, the kind the way the learning is uh, passed on very subtly uh, thank you <laughs> yeah i have really enjoyed the uh, learning and everything uh, i did all the workshops all the interactions and uh, with every person over here i'm really looking forward to stay in touch with everyone in this hall thank you so much thank you thank you ishita thank you ishita uh, mr misri oh uh, hello everyone good good evening uh, so I've, as i've already uh, said this somewhere else i uh, after a very 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 long time had such a steep upward moving graph of learning in such a short time it was a roller coaster it was like uh, i was discussing public the political philosophies and public administration philosophy on one side with apit and then other kind of uh, anthropocentric philosophies and other kind of things with ishan and totally different things with everyone else related to public policy and all uh, uh i have never imagined i've been in public policy sphere but i had never imagined i would come across uh, so many varied variety of diverse people from so many so for me it was a blast in every sense i had tunneled my down, uh, myself down before entering i was reading hegel and all that tells you down and this was the extremely right mix of uh, 
what you say intellectual wine that i needed to restart everything give me that jump start again so yeah thank you everyone it was truly truly a pleasure and a privilege thank you ishan uh, we have uh, ishan next yeah i just wanted to say um, thank you to ishan and arpit and to the whole g boss team for you know organizing this fellowship um, it has been a really insightful experience for me and um being the youngest fellow here uh, in the beginning it was a little bit intimidating because seeing so many different uh, professionals you know coming around and all mentors but after you know getting used to it it was a really um eye opening experience for me and you know through the mentors um and connecting to the mentors through the all the different workshops that happened i've gained many new um skills which i can really use and also i've gotten a lot of um insight towards you know new concepts which i didn't know before and so it's a really uh, it's been a really great experience for me and yeah i just wanted to end it with that thank you so much ishan you're also are now our preach manager in the mun circles because i recently got to know that you're very very big in in model united nations so i'm looking forward to all that happens there uh, china thanks ishan thanks arpit it was a truly enriching and a very diverse experience for me and i think uh, as you know many others said i have not only grown uh, professionally but also personally and it was a true roller coaster and i'm going to miss it because coming back from office in the session start you have to log in while you are still in the car so it was a true fun and i think uh, thanks for giving us an opportunity to make so many friends and the opportunity to learn and um, you know get to know so many mentors so many uh, fellows with whom we worked the case study sessions uh, all were fantastic and that actually brought each one of us very close to each other and it was a great learning experience and uh, as navroz and others mentioned i should not forget to also thank Uh, Jonathan for such an interesting sessions on diplomacy and I truly enjoyed the session with uh, Nimad it was very interesting Arpit and you were I and Tithli were discussing you were the sailing sailing boat for both of us because we had the uh, we had the shortest group who was uh, uh, you know presenting on that platform and thank you so much uh, srishti aditi rashi and vasi and i think i have interacted with each one of you and you people have been just awesome and ishan and arpit i think i have already started thanking you on different platforms and i'll continue to do that and i've already inspired lot of people and please um, take me already signed in if you have level 2 of this fellowship so i am already there for that thank you so much certainly thank you so much china uh pleasure having you seriously arlina over to you thank you ishan you can hear me properly right yeah yeah it's written terribly here um so first i want to thank the whole gpods team for this fellowship um it was a really great experience and i want to thank the fellows i learned so much from you guys and i think this fellowship was something i needed as how i'm kind of thinking about going to do a phd or going back to study and so like after not being um in like a study in mindset for like a few years this helped me very much so thank you everyone and i will stay i will definitely stay in touch even though i probably wasn't as interactive as sh- as i should have <laughs> during the fellowship but thank you <laughs> thank you arlina thank you arlina uh, it was a pleasure having you uh, anurag you're up next oh no i wasn't prepared yet uh, thank you all uh, it has been fun um, it was a completely new schedule for me because i had to wake up super early to do this i generally am a late waker so three months passed by i'm a different person now <laughs> uh is going to be super weird from from tomorrow when you guys won't be around yeah, but let's see uh for the next cohort i'll try to join more lectures um and um first ishan uh thanks a lot uh, for like guiding us through our project uh and all of you um, cohort members so much to learn from you such a diverse diverse team right uh psychologists jumping in when somebody was typing some weird stuff 
uh, and then uh, counterterrorism, and then uh, we talk about like so many different um, like different cohorts. It's been a crazy experience for me. Uh, definitely learned a lot. We'll try to pursue this as my mm, next career move, getting into policy, getting into um, more uh, lawmaking. So thanks a lot. And I really, really hope that your first cohort members will be uh, forces of global change in the next few years. Thank you so much, Andrak. Uh, I agree with everything except for the fact that you think that we're not going to be there tomorrow because we are... We are never leaving. You're, you're stuck with us now. <laughs> okay, uh, Anshul. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. So finally, the day has come where we have to put, bid goodbye to a part of our journeys, but this is not the end. And thanks to the GPOTS platform to help us cross our paths together. And um, I would like to say that uh, it, GPOTS helped me start thinking after my nine to five job where I was limited to all the software because I'm an IT professional. So it has been an amazing journey and thanks to Ishan, Arpe, GPOTS fellow, and I didn't as Rachita said, I didn't regret a single moment where I thought that this is not a right decision. So thank you so much for being here. And we'll continue uh, our conversation ahead as well. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we move to Alif. Hi, Alif. Hello. Hey. Um, so I was just sitting here this whole time trying to think of as many smarky or intelligent things to say for this. So here's a couple. Um, so fun fact, to be honest, I thought that GPods was a scam the first time I saw it for gullible people like myself, because I couldn't imagine that the things that you guys were offering was actually real. Um, secondly, I think the fellowship schedule has actually been very great for me, particularly just a few hours after work. So it's always been a joy. Um, thank you everyone for the crash course on India. I know that there's some kind of football level competition between all the cities, even though I've already forgotten all of the city names. And thank you everyone for being patient with all my mindless remarks, weird gifts, being a complete agent of chaos. It's been great to have all the uh, senseless laughs and new friends. Um, hopefully we can stay, uh, keep in touch. Thank you, Alif. Uh, Alif, I, I am a little disappointed. Uh, you met uh, Carlos Manuel Rodriguez for the first time and you invited him over. You've been meeting us every day for the past three months. And you haven't once invited us to Indonesia. But anyway, I, I will it's pass on the this first day. Uh, <laughs> from Alif's on Alif's behalf to everyone, guys. If we do go to Indonesia, Alif is in Bali, do visit him. Uh, okay. Or or otherwise, if you want to play those uh, horror games on your mobile phone, that's that's Alif for you. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll move to Abhinandan then. So this has been a great experience for me, especially all the team of GPods, uh, Arpit and Ishan. Uh, their level of knowledge and competency really made me awestruck and I was like taken aback. Like I really have a lot to learn in the future. So this has been a great experience in that regard. And also uh, basically uh, Aditi has been super helpful with all the interventions that she had made that we required over time. All the fellows have been wonderful working on the NP4 project and all the various workshops that we have been attending. That has been awesome. Learned a lot and people are disappointed that it is ending, but uh, I am not going anywhere. So. That's, that's the spirit. That's the spirit. I'm not Thank going anywhere. Thank you, Abhinandan. Is, is and I, I've sent talk. you the edited paper. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've seen that I'm trying to like arrange all the things that uh, in order so that we can have like a, a final save to it. And right. also I have accepted all the recommendations because I don't want to piss you off. Thank you. <laughs> good idea, good idea. I, I, I we live gave by, you a choice. I live by the same rules, Abhinandan. Okay, Aarti is up next. Uh, Ishan being the last one is really not fun because everybody takes all the points you have to say. Well, you but, know how it feels now. You've always been <laughs> alphabetically number one, so now you. But know. Uh, yeah, it has been an it's it has been a very exhilarating journey for me. I mean, when I started GPods, I was like really clueless. All I knew was I wanted to get into climate change, like no goals, no direction whatsoever. 
and now I can say that I'm at least 30% uh, smarter. Uh, so I would like to thank uh, the GPOTS team, the mentors, and all the fellow peers. It was a truly fun experience for me, and I really hope we all can stay in touch because it's been a fun. Uh, it has been a fun journey. Thanks. Thank you. Well, at least you didn't think it was a scam, so that's <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, uh, fellows. This has been a great journey. Now, let me uh, quickly invite some of our mentors to uh, speak briefly. Uh, in that order, uh, Mr. John Osterman, uh, followed by Mr. Curtis Reynolds, uh, then uh, Mr. John Dixon, and Last but not the least, our very own Mr. Jonathan Cummings. So, uh, John, over to you. Hi, thank you. I'll be quick. I know we're close on time. I uh, appreciate the invite. Uh, I'll say that I've been through uh, quite a bit of different programs throughout the world. Um, and listening to the students, you can definitely tell the impact that this program has made. Um, and you can see the, the vision, the, the excitement of the next step for them, right? Um, so it's been a pleasure, it truly has. I appreciate the invite. I'll leave you with just one comment though. Um, managers keep the world the way it is. The status quo, everything stays the same. Leaders make the world what it ought to be. Uh, all of you here have shown that for the initiative, the, the capability of making the world change. So please continue what you're doing. Um, pursue whatever it is that you're interested in. Uh, be proactive and extremely aggressive in getting those goals and change the world. Make it a better place. John, we're going to be plagiarizing that statement. I'm just giving you a heads yes. up. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's going to be my uh, convocation statement the next time around. Thank you so much, John. Uh, let, me, let me bring in uh, Curtis. If uh, Curtis, you'd like to uh, share a few words of encouragement for the fellows. Curtis, I think you're on mute. We'll have to unmute you. Yeah, um, it's been a distinct pleasure for me to um, take part in this um, wonderful experience. Um, as a mentor, um, I was um, I welcome the opportunity to impart some knowledge to the younger generation coming up, and I also had an opportunity to learn from some of the um, fellows themselves, um, so they were, some of them were quite knowledgeable and um, I think it's a very, it was a very um, intelligent sub group. And I very much look forward to the next cohort coming up in the fall. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Curtis. Uh, Curtis's office hours have been famous for being extremely interactive. So thank you so much uh, for, uh, uh, interacting with our fellows. And uh, now uh, let me welcome Mr. John Dixon. John, are you there? I know Jonathan messaged me that John Dixon is probably rushing uh, to his place to make it over here. And I see him in the room. Yeah. Hi. Our oh, you're here. in your car. Hi, John. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't make I had a meeting that uh, went long and I couldn't get out of it. So Jonathan said, just go ahead and get on in the car. Uh, I'm at this, uh, this uh, in front of Bethlehem oh, Steel, nice. the old steel plant. Can you see that? Yes. yes. Uh, this town has been disrupted and needs, uh, has, has uh, been reinvented by the arts community. It's, a, it's an exciting kind of uh, example to, to be uh, part of, and, and it's been really a lot of fun. Um, I, I also appreciate the great work that's gone on here with uh, Ishan Arpit, and uh, even though Jonathan's on the team, he's still able to do good work and, and make things happen. I, I did get to hear most of the uh, stories, and I was impressed because it's very clear that, that, uh, the, that the relationships were valued and, uh, and seen as value in, in this program, and that is the number one value, I believe, that, that will come out uh, that, that you have going forward. And, and those are critical important. I met a, I met a, a young person at a student leaders uh, program uh, when I was a young man. Uh, and uh, 
it turned out he was from Okinawa. He invited me over there. I had a wild experience in Okinawa. And uh, I found myself teaching a seminar on communication to the Japanese uh, self-defense force, the military mm -hmm. officer. That was the week of 9-11, 2001. So uh, that, I, I've got to bring this up because you'll, you'll see, but um, uh, anyhow, it was it happened in the evening in Japan, what was uh, with the Twin Towers. And, and I was part of the association of World Trade Centers that was headquartered there. So I, I was, of course, shocked and we couldn't call anybody in the off in our headquarters, couldn't know how people were. I was just crying all the time, trying to teach these military officers. And they're in my face saying, what's America going to do? How are you going to retaliate? So and then I would just have to go out in the hallway and cry more because I didn't know. I had no idea. But finally, an inspiration came very strong that we should make a World Trade Center in Afghanistan. Because what makes a country dangerous is isolation. What makes a person dangerous is isolation. So what you've overcome here in this cohort group is isolation. And the, and the network is powerful and enriching and it, and it, and it, and it uh, nourishes our humanness. It's so important. So uh, I, I, uh, you know, uh, and I applaud the, the effort and the uh, attention to that. In, in the program, and you've all uh, given a great uh, um, evidence of, of that um, attention. So I, then after I had the idea, I, I found a friend who had helped another friend of mine making a documentary of the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan. This is a young Afghan leader. And mm -hmm. we went together to the USAID in Washington to ask for support for this project that is not going to be we couldn't raise funds for so that we, we we were talking with this USAID director and I brought the vice president of the association and he said uh I by the way I've never done a zoom in the car before so if I'm it looks around, brilliant John oh, really? okay. <laughs> you should Sorry. always do it in the car after <laughs> this. <laughs> I appreciate your patience here with me but uh Every time we would make this, uh, make our proposal, then this USAID administrator would say it would object. And finally, I said, we're wasting time here. Uh, it, it seems like everything I propose, you bring an objection to. Aziz Sadat, my partner, overcomes that objection, you find another one. And I, I brought the vice president of the association here. He explained to you how USAID purchased the license for the World Trade Center, Amman, Jordan. So what's the problem? He said, you're right. I will never approve this project. He said, globalization is not good for Afghanistan. So what he meant by that was he likes going to Afghanistan and bringing books and candies to the peasant children that are very colorful clothing. If they were to get a shopping mall there and everybody's wearing blue jeans and t-shirts, they would lose their culture. So he decided that I, I couldn't believe it, but in his opinion, these, we should not, these people shouldn't have access to the global economy, the global market, the global culture. So I just thought that's an unbelievable arrogant thing, but I found that to be kind of typical in, in my engagements with some of these uh, uh, institutions. Uh, so I, I want to just share with you, uh, you know, because so we did finally establish World Trade Center Kabul, and I have many friends there, and they're calling me all the time, and if I can help, and even someone I met in Hyderabad with uh, with Arpit's program a couple of years ago was calling and trying to see if I could help. But what a but what a monumental failure this. Uh, Afghanistan uh, turned out to be. And the thing is the people managing that program were very smart. You're all very smart. And uh, they, they were all up on the latest literature and they shared literature with each other. And they wrote, they really wrote for approval from one another. They were really one voice and they were not in touch with the people on the ground. 
So I just want to, and that's the only way it could be such a huge, huge disaster with so many smart people behind it. So it's good that you're all very smart. That's very evident. And it's good that you connect with each other, but please broaden your networks to include the people on the street, on the ground, the, the uh, people outside of your discipline. It's, be, it's this interaction, be, intersection between disciplines where really the magic happens and it's where all the reasonable solutions come from. It's easy to get stuck in a, in a circular kind of thinking that, that, um, that, that perpetuates itself but be, becomes farther and further distant from, from, from the real situation on the ground and it can happen anywhere. Please don't let that happen. Stay connected, not just with one another, as, you, as I'm, I'm confident you will. And these mentors, by the way, thank you. You guys obviously did a great job uh, with, uh, uh, with the cohort group here. But, but always make effort to expand beyond the, the people that you normally run with in your, your circles and your profession. Get out, reach out to as, as broad and different discipline backgrounds as possible and be in touch with the people on the ground because uh, that, that's, that's uh, and it's easy to not find them when you're living in Washington, DC or, or Delhi or London, uh, but, it, but uh, you have to make the effort. So I've just implore, implore, your, implore you to do that. I, I, uh, it's been a rough, rough couple of weeks for me. And so uh, thank you for you know, your patience with this little, a uh, few words and uh, I, I wish you all great luck and uh, stay in touch with me also. I love you even though we didn't uh, get to meet before, but I, I really appreciate what you're doing, your uh, passion for it and your commitment to it. So thank you. Thank you, Arpit, Ishan and, uh, and Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you so much, John, for always being such an inspiration and uh, absolutely agree with you on uh, getting in touch and staying in touch with people as different uh, as uh, possible. And I think, you know, uh, the magic, as you said, happens at the intersection of uh, ideas which are different. So thank yes. you uh, for your, uh, you know, great work and for your great words and for always being so supportive. And uh, uh, we absolutely, absolutely love you. And uh, we would uh, find the earliest opportunity to uh, catch hold of you when we are in uh, Pennsylvania. I know Saeed from yeah. the first cohort uh, got a chance to yeah. meet you over there as well. And yeah, uh, that's right. Jonathan probably makes a trip to your place every uh, <laughs> twice in a day. <laughs> or, yeah. or, so uh, thank you for that. And now let me... Uh, Bring in Jonathan, last but not the least. Uh, John, over to you. Thanks, uh, John. Uh, thank you, Arpit. John, <laughs> wow, <laughs> always causing trouble. Good words is always roughly better. <laughs> so, hello, everyone. It's uh, really a pleasure to be here and seeing your faces after such a long time. Congratulations on reaching your watershed moment, you know. Uh, Echo and Arpit, you've completed this fellowship and you should be excited. And now you're a part of this exclusive compact of people spanning across the globe. And this is really exciting stuff. I'm proud of you and I'm pretty sure you all will keep in touch and really expand the network of GPODs. And it's amazing to see what will happen in the future. So for these uh, quick remarks, now I really wanna talk about this book that I read every couple of months and it's called The Alchemist. And I'm sorry for those who've never read it because I'm about to ruin it for all of you. So The Alchemist is about the journey of a shepherd boy named Santiago. Uh, he believed in a recurrent dream that which is prophetic. He asked a gypsy fortune teller in a nearby town about its meaning. The woman interprets the dream as a prophecy telling the boy that he will discover a treasure at the Egyptian pyramids. After he finds his treasure, he's supposed to give her 10% because I guess not everything in his life comes for free, right? Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Early into his journey, he met an old king who tells him that 10% of his sheep, uh, he needs to give him 10% of his sheep and sells the rest. He told the boy that he needs to do this if he wants to travel to Egypt and accomplish his personal legend. Also, 
the 10% that was traded for the information, the king would tell him, would see if the boy was serious. And he did so. Early in his arrival in Africa, the boy trusted the wrong person. He's robbed of his money and he made, that he made from selling his sheep. He was sad, but he refused to be deterred. He wanted to find his personal legend. And the secret to life, though, is even if you fall seven times, make sure you get up that eight time, because that's the secret to life, right? He found a crystal merchant in the area and began to work for, work for this merchant to earn enough money to get to the pyramids. After getting enough money, he continued upon his travel and continuing on his travel, he met an Englishman who was also in search of an alchemist. They befriended each other and went to a trip at an oasis. At the oasis, Santiago fell in love with this Arabian woman named Fatima, to whom he proposed to marry. Now, this is a woman that he met, you know, met and fell in love at first sight because, you know, back then dating apps and Tinder didn't exist. So, you know, this is, this is old school. She promised to marry him only after he completed his journey. The boy learned that true love or nothing should really stop him from completing his personal destiny because if it stopped him, it would rob him of his truth. Back at this oasis, Santiago had the opportunity to settle his life and become a counselor for the chief of the oasis, which was a decently powerful position, but Santiago turned it down because he knew that that was not what he was meant to do. The boy then encountered a wise alchemist who also taught him with realizing his true self. And together, they risk a journey through warring territories in which the boy was forced to demonstrate his oneness with the soul of the world by turning himself into a dust storm before allowing to proceed. In the context of the soul of the world, the thing that binds us all together and drives us is love. The author said that when we love, we also strive to become better than we are. We strive to become better than we are and everything around us becomes better too. Eventually, the boy made it to the pyramids, got robbed again, but accidentally learned that the leader of the thieves, which robbed him, uh, he found out that the treasure was actually under a church close to his homeland from an original dream. But that's not the point. I brought this up because the lessons from that book show that when you really want something, all the universe conspires in helping you achieve it. And also remember, if someone, if someone isn't what others want them to be, they become angry, sure. But everyone seems to have a clear idea of how others should live their lives, but none of, of how they should live their own. So remember that. Now, as you close this three month chapter, as you've identified this watershed moment, as Arpit said, I always end up saying this to each cohort, you know, being humble isn't the same as being aware, be, being aware. But don't take that as this message to be arrogant because the people you step on to get to the top are the same people you'll see when you fall back down. I'm saying that in order to have you guys realize your power and acknowledge your own self-worth because you're all powerful and you're worthy of achieving anything you put your mind to. You're all worthy of love. You're, worthy, you're very worthy of changing this world. Now go out and accomplish your personal legends because when you really want something, all the universe will conspire in helping you achieve it. So thank you. And with that, congratulations, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, John. Uh, okay. This, guys, I want to I, I take a moment to crib about something. Uh, three cohorts three graduation ceremonies in a row. I am supposed to follow my vote of thanks after Jonathan Cummins has spoke. <laughs> and every time I have bombed because John has killed it with his, uh, with his talk, with the way he inspires. Uh, I am also uh, fascinated by how John can be absolutely two people. He can be this intellectual who guides you and he can be, you know, what he usually is otherwise. Uh, thank you, John. This is, this is as Snehil said, uh, this is one of the most beautiful summaries of the book and the application is so relevant to all of us. Uh, and this is the time uh, when we're about to close our graduation ceremony uh, for all of you. I would like to start by thanking the GPATS team. 
uh, I want to tell you guys a little story. Uh, when Arpit had this idea about G pods and and we started onboarding people, uh, we truly believe that the standout point of the fellowship will always be that we will pledge to ourselves that each of these reports fellow is a family member to us. And I'm not joking, that's a personal pledge that Arpit and I have made. What becomes so, and I hope that shows, and I hope that shows throughout your lives as it should through us. But what is the most important thing when you're, when you're undertaking such a large endeavor to create a family, which is now 100 people big, uh, just two parents and one goofy uncle cannot take, of, take care of this family. Uh, you need people who help us manage. You need people to take care of each of our fellows the way we would. And that's why I think that we are very lucky to have a very small team. Uh, but the small team resonates our understanding of what family should be, what we expect from ourselves towards you and what we expect all of us to deliver to each of the fellows. So to all the team members, uh, Aditi, Srishti, Vasi, Rashi, uh, Eshwarya, every, uh, all of the interns who've worked with us, all the TAs, thank you so much for agreeing with us in how we want to develop this uh, and to whatever little uh, extent we have succeeding, succeeded in doing this, it is because of all of you. To all the mentors, again, I'll start with a little story. Uh, when, again, this idea was being ideated and we were still unsure how, how would we be able to pull off such a big task of, you know, such a big fellowship and it seemed, it felt like a scam, it felt like a scam to me, Alice, let alone you, when I was thinking about this. Uh, but we spoke with, Jonathan Cummings, uh, we spoke, uh, and you know, he's been our friend philosopher guide throughout ever since. We spoke with uh, Mr. Dixon. Uh, we spoke with Justice Luke Lavis. In fact, one of the first people to whom, whom I called about the fellowship was uh, Justice Luke Lavison. He is now the, uh, the chief of the Constitutional Court of Belgium. And he told me that this is one of the best things that he's heard of and he'd love to be a mentor. And, and, and I was not sure if he understood me, what we were trying to do here. So I told him again and he had the same response. And that gave me faith in the structure that we were trying to pull off here. Uh, the, the same common thread of family that flows through the team then came to the mentors. Uh, and throughout this journey, now we have what 125 mentors rich from 37, 40 countries around the globe, uh, global leaders who've inspired me when I was growing up and who will probably inspire me until I uh, grow up to be what I wish to be. And as I hope they do to you as well. So thank you to all the mentors. I, I, I cannot undertake, undertake the uh, task of naming all of you because that will uh, take up all night. But thank you, John, Curtis, Manish, John Osterman, uh, John Dixon. Oh, we have a lot of Johns in the room. I feel like Ishans are being, uh, being left behind. Anyway, so thank you so much, guys. Uh, we are absolutely nothing without your constant support. Uh, your support for us is what wills us on to do this over and over again and to be as dedicated as we are. Now, I... I'd also like to thank a very special person here, uh, the person who came up with the idea of G-Pods, uh, the person who has been the backbone, uh, the person who's seen two weddings and still our work has been unaffected only because uh, he's been there managing everything. Uh, Arpit, uh, the way you execute everything, I think everyone knows uh, how important you are to this. Arpit is hell-bent on taking the number of classes uh, that he does despite me trying to persuade him in every cohort that listen, cut down on your classes, let's concentrate elsewhere. But he just loves interacting with you guys and he has been interacting with all of you since day one uh, of the cohort. 
thank you for the kind of energy you bring in Arpit. I still want to share that uh, Hermione's time turner that you use to make time for all the things that you do. No, and to, and to you for uh, bringing in all of the business acumen because uh, Ishan is a lawyer, but he's more of a business fellow. I'll, I'll tell you, he knows how to manage an organization. And uh, I think that's the extent to which our self uh, congratulate. I, I agree, I agree. We should probably yeah. move on. But the common thread still flows, guys. It's Arpit is quite literally family. So we've seen that from uh, our team, our mentors, Arpit is my brother. Uh, and finally, uh, to the most important uh, hook through which this thread flows, which is each of you. Uh, I really hope that through the past three months, uh, we have made you feel that you deserve to be here. Uh, I know that we get a lot of applications. I also know that a lot of you wonder why you have gotten through, but it's only because we think that you have something that will help you become a global leader, that will help you become an opinion maker. And I do not say that lightly about everyone. Uh, I say that very strongly about each of you. I truly believe that my biggest challenge in life will be keeping an eye out on each of the uh, wonderful things that all of you achieve in your life. Uh, because I'm sure they're going to be many and they're going to be uh, uh, fruitful for the world. You emerge as global leaders. Now you're equipped in sustainability, public policy and international relations. I mean, you have so many tools to, to handle this world, change this world for the better get conversations going, raise awareness, uh, become trainers, become mentors. Uh, and again, uh, that's, that's the reason why I say that one of the thresholds for deciding who joins the cohort is whether we see them as a mentor 10, 15, 20 years down the line. And trust me, all of you are well on your way to getting that invitation one day. Uh, I also hope that uh, you haven't been pestered by sometimes when Arpit and I reach out to each of you or all of you in the group. I know that we're ever present in the WhatsApp group, we're ever present on all the emails, but that's only because you should know that uh, both Arpit and I are always there, as is all of our GPOTS team and all of our mentors. Uh, and and even that's, if you feel pestered, we're not going to stop. Yes, that's true. Uh, but we're always there because, again, we really do consider that this graduation is the start of your journey with GPODs. Uh, up till now was the prologue, was the precursor to what all that we're going to do within the GPODs community and the world community. But I, I, I really need to tell you that this conversation will never end from our end. Uh, which brings me to my final thanks to, to the whole uh, uh, everyone who's covered us in the news and the UN SDG impact awards and everything great that's been happening with us. I'd like to thank everyone who's watching us, who's applying for the next cohort, uh, who's, who's encouraging us day in, day out. Uh, and yeah, uh, I have a final request to all of you. Remember, there's only so much I can do. Yeah, and there's only so much Arpit can do or Srishti or Aditi or Rashi. If ever you're in two minds, whether you should reach out to us, if you need any help, if you need any guidance, if you, if you have a critique about what we're doing, always remember there's only one right answer. Yes, you should reach out. Never hesitate. We're always there for you at every step of the way. You are, as Aleph said, you are stuck for life. You cannot escape us. Once cheap pods, always cheap pods, uh, and your family. So, you know, you're stuck. Uh, with that being said, I hope that all of you get busy with your work, but do take out time uh, for us every now and then. And do visit us whenever you're in, in, in our town. Uh, do carry on the conversations internationally, locally, about us, with us. And remember, we're, we're only as strong as our weakest link. And, and that probably is Arpit and I put together. So you need to keep encouraging us to keep doing this every now and then. Uh, 
because I think you're the stronger ones of all of us. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you to the team. Thank you to the mentors. And I hope you have a tremendous life. I'm sure uh, we'll be keeping in touch and wish you all the best, guys. And with this, we uh, declare you as fellows and welcome to the alumni network. And with this, we uh, declare this convocation session closed. Thank you. Okay.